guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys swinging by checking today's video out. And got a good one for you guys today because um, if you fish long enough, you're gonna deal with what I'm talking about today. And I wanna talk about the complexities of either cutting somebody off or getting cut off by another angler when you're fishing down a bank because this happens all too often. So I'm gonna sort of give you guys my opinion on the entire situation from both sides of the coin because I've had a lot of experience getting cut off and having to deal with getting cut off over the years of my tournament fishing. So we're gonna get into that in today's video. Also guys, just a quick reminder about anyone interested in booking an on the water lesson with me, we're booking jerk, on the water jerk bait lessons right now. You can just shoot me a private message on my Facebook page, Randy Block at Professional Angler for information. And also just a big thank you guys to everyone that's been using my uh, links that I put in my video descriptions uh, for like the Tackle Warehouse link and Solar Bat Sunglasses. Thank you very much for uh, supporting the channel with that, much appreciated. Okay guys, getting cut off or cutting somebody off. <clears throat> Let's talk about both sides of the coin here, sort of uh, you know how to deal with that type of stuff. I've had a lot of experience with it over the years. First of all, let's talk about um, cutting somebody off, or if you're the one that's cutting somebody off. I'm sort of, sort of gonna give you guys sort of like an ethic, from my perspective, an ethical point of view on what you need to do with this or how you need to handle it. Because there are so many different scenarios that go behind this. Sometimes I have seen the situation where you unintentionally cut off somebody because you simply didn't see them there. They could be, maybe they're, they were, you were fishing down or, or you pulled up on a row of docks and somebody was tucked in there and you didn't see them. Some, sometimes like that, it's just an innocent, you just didn't see them. That's no big deal there. But what I wanna talk about is some of those guys out there that um, intentionally cut somebody off. Now, there's two different people as far as personalities that I have encountered that cut people off. Number one are the people that are just oblivious about it. They don't, they don't even think they're doing anything wrong or they don't know they're doing anything wrong or they're so, you know, they're not paying attention or, you know, they don't have a lot of experience. A lot, a lot of the people that cut other anglers off um, simply don't have a lot of experience in knowing that that's not the right thing to do. They just don't know any better. And then you have other people out there that intentionally do that to try to get an advantage. Say there's a place that, say somebody's fishing the row, you know, just a, down a shoreline or something like that, and somebody intentionally whips around front in front of them too close, simply because they want to get there before somebody else does. That is, that is a, the epitome of a dick move right there. All it happens all too often. So anyway, guys, if you're, if you're one of those people, one of those two categories, if you're one of those people out there that have cut people off and you didn't really mean to do it, or you didn't know that you were doing anything wrong, the main thing to remember is just pay attention. And it's like when you see somebody fishing down a shoreline there, give them plenty of room. It's like if you want to, say, say you really want to fish that shoreline, the ethical and the right thing to do is to get behind them. Say, for example, if they're working down the bank this way right here, don't ever come up in front of somebody like that and cut them off. If, if they're working down a shoreline like this, get way behind them. I'm not talking like right on their butt, but get way behind them and start working down towards them as they're working. So, so you're both working like this, but you, you're back a long way with that. That is the right thing to do. Don't ever, you know, just get up in front of somebody and start fishing. Now, on the other hand, if somebody's fishing a, a shoreline and say there's a quarter mile of shoreline in front of them, obviously they can't, you know, claim that entire quarter mile of shoreline, but give them, if you're going to pull up in front of somebody on a long stretch of shoreline, give them plenty and plenty of room. I mean, get, give them at least, man, at least a hundred yards or more, you know, 150 yards, maybe even 200 yards. Get, get out of their range to where you don't have, you, you don't feel that you're impacting on what they're doing at all with that. That's, that's the right way to do it. Now, if you're one of those guys that uh, pull up there intentionally and just to try to get ahead of somebody that's working down the bank, you need to examine your ethics and your morals a little bit because there's a fine line between being an a-hole on the water and being competitive with that. If you are all balls to the wall about fishing something in front of somebody else out there, 
The, the right thing to do is to idle up to that person and say, hey, look, man, um, there's a stretch of shoreline I want to fish up in front there. You know, what's a comfortable distance that I can get in front of you and want to fish this? Just be cool. Be nice about it. Because most of the time, somebody's going to say, well, you know, can I have, you know, 100 yards or whatever like that. Sometimes somebody may be, you know, hard to deal with and say, well, I'm going to fish this whole shoreline there. And then at that time you have to make a judgment call, but don't ever just, you know, blatantly pull up in front of somebody like a hundred feet in front of them and start fishing. That's just not the right thing to do um, from, that, from that point of view. Now, if you're one of those people out there that get cut off, um, then you have to decide how to deal with getting cut off. I'm gonna give you guys a very important piece of advice that you need to listen to here, whether you're somebody that cuts somebody off or you get cut off. When you approach somebody, I don't care, say you're one of those guys that cut somebody off and you did it intentionally, or say you're somebody that got cut off. When you approach somebody, if you're approaching somebody that you cut off or somebody that cuts you off, you're taking risk involved with that because you don't know how mentally stable somebody is at that point. You don't know, if you're one of those guys that, you know, cut somebody off on intentionally, you don't know that guy, you know, the day before that he could have lost his wife or he could, he, his wife, he could have found out his wife was cheating on him. And that guy, he's got a short fuse and has nothing to lose. He doesn't feel anything. He has anything to live for. He may just idle up to you and pull out a nine millimeter and blow you away right there. You don't ever know about that. He may pull up to you and get in your boat and just beat you like a pulp, you know, and both ends of that. So you don't know when you approach somebody, there's an element of risk involved with that. So that being said, you can't just be an unconditional doormat. If you, It's like if somebody pulls up to you, you have to assess the situation and decide how you want to handle it. The best way to handle any situation is to try to do it in some type of a non-confrontational manner initially. Usually what I have, usually what happens to me, because I've been cut off a bunch of my career, I've been cut off in, in tournaments where I've been leading the tournaments, I've had guys cut, cut off. The first thing that I usually do is if somebody cuts me off like that, I'll go up to them and I'll say, dude, I'm fishing the shoreline here. I've been fishing the shoreline for two days or whatever. I haven't seen anyone here. Um, you know, I, this is the stretch I'm fishing. You know, if you don't mind, let me have it. More than not, when you do that, when you say something like that, somebody say, man, sorry about that, I'll get out of your way. That, that's the, the deal to do with that. If you get somebody out there, say for example, that's belligerent and you really wanna fish that shoreline and, you, and I go to them and I say the same thing um, and I say, explain to them that I'm doing the thing, I try to give, I give them the opportunity to do the right thing. And if they don't do the right thing, then you know, we have a different conversation out there. And the conversation I usually have with them um, is based upon their attitude, um, how bad I want to fish the bank, what the situation is on the bank as far as how much uh, potential cover is ahead of me. There's always a different scenario to each one of those. But if I always try to approach any type of situation like that, you know, with a calm, you know, you know, just give them the opportunity to make the right decision and do the right thing. And then, like I said, I've had situations where I've had to, to escalate it a little bit and, uh, you know, take some different action out there. But it, nevertheless, it's a judgment call. If you're a type of person out there that is not confrontational and you don't want to get into confrontation, um, then you just leave. I mean, it depends on how bad you want to fish it, but you can remove yourself from the situation as well. So a lot of it just depends on everything. It depends on the type of person you are. You know, it depends on, uh, you know, the situation with the bank. It depends on the uh, response and the action from the other person out there. A lot of different factors involved with that. Ultimately though, it's just a matter of, of education. It's like, in my opinion, if you're one of those guys out there that's going to be an asshole and you're going to cut people off just to give yourself a competitive edge, you don't have any business fishing. You don't have any right to be on the water. That's just, that's unethical. We don't need people on the water like that. So um, that's, that's my opinion on, on that viewpoint there. And if anything, if you're in a tournament, you know, uh, report them. If you, get, if, you, if you feel that you've been slighted 
and that you have been uh, treated unfairly in some way out there, in a, you're in a tournament, report them to the tournament director. Most of the confrontations that escalate on the water are, are usually during a tournament. It's like if you're just fishing for fun, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I've had, I've had people cut me off all the time. If, I, if I'm fishing for fun and somebody cuts me off, I just dismiss it as, hey, whatever. The dude, maybe the dude, he's just too stupid to know any better or he, maybe he's having a bad day and, and I just let it go. The only time that I ever have gotten confrontational with somebody is if I'm in a tournament situation and there's a lot on the line there. So every situation is unique to their own. But main thing, guys, is just respect everybody out there. Respect, you know, you know re respect somebody that's fishing that, that was there before you. And like I said, if you really want to fish it, go up and just have a civil conversation with the person and ask if they if you can slip in there somewhere and start fishing. So uh, that's just part of what you have to deal with when you're fishing public waters as part of the reality of the situation. So that's sort of my two cents on it, guys. So hope you guys are doing well. We'll talk later.